Jillian Michaels, the woman's name is synonymous with early 2000s diet culture, which was arguably probably the worst era of diet culture thus far. She called people selfish. It's not all about you. Don't be so selfish. Pathetic. You're not acting strong. You're acting pathetic. Encouraged people to work out so hard that they threw up. Let me see it. If you do not throw up right now, we're going to have problems. And it kind of seemed like she legit enjoyed it. And while the biggest loser may be behind us, thank God, she now is spreading tough love through YouTube, Instagram, and her podcast, Keeping It Real. The woman certainly doesn't sugarcoat anything. And today we're gonna see her own tough love approach to feeding herself in a day. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at everything Jillian Michaels eats in a day. A reminder, please, to read my disclaimer and also check out my trigger warning as we will be discussing very restrictive behaviors. So please feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you guys are new here, help your girl out, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok on Abby's Kitchen. Before we get too far into things, let me tell you about my sponsor, Green Chef. So I've been spending the past few weeks in the States, sort of on holiday, but also sort of even more stressed because I'm trying to work and I'm trying to be a super hands-on mom at the same time. So dinner most nights isn't exactly my top priority. So I'm always really excited when my Green Chef box comes because it low-key saves me on hectic nights. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic meal kit subscription service that offers specific options for a wide range of lifestyles like vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, keto or paleo, and gluten-free. All of their kits contain step-by-step -step recipes along with farm fresh produce and other organic sustainably sourced ingredients. The recipes are super easy, especially the fast and fit meals, which are ready in 25 minutes or less. And everything is pre portioned out so you really don't have to think about it like it saves me a lot of thinking when I'm already not really in my usual routine at home this week I made the spicy chicken and broccoli stir fry I love stir fries in general but I'm always looking for new sauces other than just like a basic teriyaki and this spicy ginger lime aioli that it came with really took it to the next level I also got a kit for beef adobo bell pepper stew an Italian shrimp garden bowls. So obviously lots of different protein options and cultural flavors to kind of keep things interesting. Plus Green Chef makes it super easy to customize orders if you've got some people in the house who are vegan and others who are gluten-free, etc. So if you want to try out Green Chef for yourself, use my code ABBY60 to get 60% off plus free shipping and check out greenchef.com in the description below for more details. All right, Jillian, get at me. So I'm gonna try to fly in graphics so I can give you guys visuals since I can't, you know, I can't make everything. I mean, most people do have to make or buy the food that they eat in a day, so I'm not sure why that's such an outrageous suggestion, but go on, Jillian, let's hear it. I'm big into longevity, not looking to lose weight. So all of the current research by all the top experts suggest that eating less food is less oxidative stress, allows you to live longer and eating less often, more importantly, which is why you guys are hearing all the time about intermittent fasting. I would love to see this research from these top experts that she's referencing. I'm just hoping this expert knows his stuff. Because as usual, it feels like Jillian is not seeing the forest from the trees. So Jillian's argument is grounded in this concept of autophagy or the degradation of cellular components. I spoke to my colleague, Eric Williamson, who is an expert in this space, who did an amazing webinar on this, so you should definitely check it out. But in short, the research has found that doing a 21 hour fast every day increases a lifespan by 17%. That's pretty significant. But, and this is a big but, almost all of our research on autophagy and fasting has been done on rats. 
And we're different than rats in a few key ways. Their metabolism is more dynamic and over six times faster. Their heart rate is almost five times faster. We live 27 times longer. Their protein turnover is almost 10 times faster and they voluntarily run 10 to 20 kilometers a day. And most of us do not. I do you have any snacks? <laughs> And while autophagy is important to clean up damaged cell matter, too much autophagy is potentially also dangerous. In fact, some mice breeds in that research actually live less long when fasting. As for the argument that eating less food period also helps you live longer, there is some basis for this argument, namely that it keeps our body fat levels low and also possibly helps to suppress MTOR activity, which is mainly associated with reducing cancer and heart disease. But as Eric puts it to me, calorie restriction may theoretically increase the length of life, but it usually comes at the expense of quality of life. Extreme hunger, obsessive thoughts about food, press metabolic rate, etc. So Eric suggests focusing less on fasting or calorie restriction for autophagy and rather focusing on exercise, which not only stimulates autophagy, but also targets MTOR activities in the muscle where it's needed. In conclusion, is a life of starving really a life at all? Just some food for thought, Jillian. First thing I do is I cheat that 12 hour window to 14 hours with what's called a dirty fast. Leave it to Jillian Michaels to fit so much unnecessary moralizing language in one short sentence. But FYI, a dirty fast is kind of a made up pseudo fast that allows a small amount of calories, usually under 100 calories during the fast. Now, we don't have any research specifically on dirty fasts. We can assume that you may end up with the calorie restriction benefits of a fast, but lose out on the autophagy, digestive, and in most cases, insulin suppressing benefits of a traditional clean fast. Ugh, I hate that these words are coming out of my mouth right now. So I have organic coffee, really important that coffee is organic because it is a very heavily sprayed crop with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. So organic coffee, and I just put heavy whipping cream in it that's organic. Okay, but is it really imperative that you drink organic coffee? Let's talk about it. So first of all, just because a coffee isn't labeled certified organic doesn't mean they aren't using organic processes. It's actually really expensive to get an organic certification and it can take years of production before eligible. So there are a lot of products out there that may be using organic growing practices, but just can't afford the fancy title. Second, organic crops aren't necessarily pesticide free. They are just using non-synthetic pesticides and natural is not necessarily safer or ecologically better. But regardless of the pesticide source, what's important here is that we don't pick up a coffee bean and like eat it raw like an apple. The bean is the seed of the fruit, the flesh of the fruit is discarded, and the seed is put through an extensive drying and roasting process. Research suggests that this roasting process removes 99.8% of the pesticides present. So you know my drill on coffee. Let the people just have the way they like it without a lecture. Next. Why? Why am I doing that? It's organic heavy whipping cream, okay? So it has no carbs and no protein. Is it's protein and carbs in particular that break the overnight fast. Okay, so I really don't think any of this is worth harping on, but FYI, whipping cream is not pure fat. It does have small amounts of protein and carbs. Again, we don't have any good data on dirty fasting, but it's very possible that this would halt the autophagy process, the migratory motor complex for good digestion, and possibly even stimulate insulin as well. On my most awesome days, I will have two organic eggs and a piece of whole grain toast. Uh, I'll have organic grass-fed Greek yogurt with all different berries and fruits and cocoa nibs and nuts. I'm sorry, what does it even mean most awesome days? Is this like when she's good and eats clean? I guess we'll never know. But this meal does sound amazing. We've got protein and healthy fats in the eggs, yogurt and nuts, and fiber rich carbs in the toast and berries. Like it sounds like a perfect sweet and savory combo meal and we love to see it. And then when I just am kind of like, oh, I don't know, I don't feel like it. I'll have two pieces of organic whole grain bread with peanut butter and no, peanuts are not the devil. That is a lie. About anti-nutrients in food, that's 
baloney. But at least we can agree on something. And she is right. Despite what those carnivores will try to convince you of, anti-nutrients are not the devil. The major anti-nutrient found in peanuts is phytic acid, which does slightly reduce the absorption of iron and zinc. But this is really not a major concern in healthy individuals eating a normal varied diet. It's also worth pointing out that peanut butter and peanuts actually have the highest amount of protein compared to other nuts in the nut kingdom. So I say that this is a great simple meal for those days when you're feeling a little meh. Or when I'm really kind of like, all right, I'm gonna be you know, less than responsible. I will have an organic everything bagel with organic cream cheese and wild caught lox. It's not that bad. This poor woman, like why does she need to repent for her irresponsible bagel choice and try to convince us that it's not that bad? I'm like, no one would have ever thought that a bagel with lox is bad until you convinced everyone watching that it was. Like me. Not a monster lunch eater. In fact, it's really more of a snack. And the reason is because I'll have a bigger snack and a smaller kind of lunch so that I end up eating less at dinner. Okay, so what I'm getting out of this is that she has a late breakfast, then she fits in two snacks, we will call them, a small lunch and a big snack, and then a small dinner. And I mean, if that works for her, there are some metabolism benefits to front loading calories and our carbs earlier on in the day. And of course, some folks will find that they sleep much better without a heavy meal before bed. At the end of the day, what really matters here is that you've met your nutrient needs. Somehow, some way, in the day, or even as an average over a few days. To be honest, I'll have like a piece of fruit and a little bit of protein, like some uh, rotisserie chicken, uh, some thing of tuna salad, organic string cheese and a piece of fruit, nothing crazy, some protein and some carbs and some healthy fats. Okay, so we will call this meal two. It's basically a small snack that's balanced. We're looking at like maybe 200 calories top. So yeah, she was definitely right about the light lunch situation. So I try to make this kind of a monster size salad and it could be like a healthy cob. I leave off the bacon, I put the dressing on the side, Mediterranean with grilled salmon on top, taco salad, right? Without the fried little taco things, always dressing on the side. Basically big salad, protein, complex carbs, dressing on the side. I'm sorry, the early 2000s have called and you've always got to have the dressing on the side. Never a crispy thing in sight, ever. I mean, God forbid they tossed the salad or a crouton got mixed in, we would obviously have to send it back. If the salad is on top, I send it back. I'm just being sassy. I think this sounds delicious, minus the old school diet tips. I mean, I guess Jillian made her mark in diet culture during the early 2000s. She's kind of got to stay true to her brand with these tips. And I'm not an idiot. I know that these things can help to slash calories, but why are we so concerned about cutting calories when earlier on in this video, we talked about not trying to lose weight? You're confused, I'm confused, she's confused. We're all a bit confused. Now, by the time I hit dinner, I'm feeling pretty full because I eat all of that fiber and I'm gonna eat less. And this is where I generally will go out to eat. So if we go for sushi, um, I don't have rolls, but I do have sushi salmon sushi, I'll have yellowtail sashimi, I'll have edamame, I'll have the seaweed salad, always get the seaweed salad, so good for you. I try to get wild caught salmon, which is not so easy to find when you go for sushi. Okay, so basically she's using a classic low calorie preload tactic to reduce the temptation or appetite to eat the foods that are maybe higher in carbs or calories in general while eating out. And it is an evidence-based suggestion with research finding that a small salad reduced subsequent calorie intake by 7% and a large salad by 12%. Soup would top the charts at a 20% reduction. If we go for Mexican, I do the fajitas, light oil. I don't generally do the tortillas. So basically just kind of like some semi-steamed vegetables and meat with some spices. I have to assume chefs in LA just get used to these requests, but personally for me, I would just like make this at home. If we go for Italian, I tend to get like the bronzino or like the grilled protein with tons of veggies. Again, no carbs in sight, just vegetables and fish. And bronzino is delicious, but I would feel personally victimized if I went to an Italian restaurant and didn't have a bite of pizza or pasta. Just me? I know it's not just me.
try to make this stuff at home because I will have like five different veggies so I feel really full and I'm getting tons of fiber. So there seems to be a real obsession here with like stuffing herself full of water and fiber and avoiding any added fats to make her feel full on a small amount of calories, which is again, very strange for someone who claims not to be interested in losing weight. Try to get those spring rolls that aren't fried and like rice paper and some sort of veggie dish. Sure it has oil and some salt in it, but I try to say light oil. Yeah, so this is starting to feel a little bit like Victoria Beckham's diet with a bit more variety mixed in, but the bones are basically the same. Chinese is tough to eat out, but my wife makes like this sick Hong Pao chicken at home, which is white meat chicken, steamed rice, all the peppers, and she does really light oil and keeps it clean. I don't think Chinese food needs to be hard to eat out if you have a balanced, healthy relationship with food. But I will say her wife's version sounds amazing and I would totally stay in if someone wanted to make that for me, minus the moralizing clean eating language. I don't do dessert, I don't drink often. There are some health benefits to alcohol in moderation. So Jillian's talking about the health benefits of wine or alcohol in moderation. And she's right, alcohol like wine is rich in the antioxidants like resveratrol, which has been linked to reduce inflammation when consumed in moderation. But the key here, is moderation. Unlike with other toxins like smoking, which has a pretty linear relationship with use and mortality risk, alcohol has a J-shaped curve. So a little may be helpful, but much more can be very, very bad. Personally, I don't believe in adding alcohol for its health benefits, but if you do enjoy drinking like I do, a couple drinks a week likely won't hurt. My supplement regimen is insane and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is nuts. This is where it might be a little less relatable. I'm sorry, was that whole interview that we just watched supposed to be relatable? I take um, a lot of multi-collagen. I add matcha green tea powder, Cylon cinnamon, turmeric, and ginger. I put a monster, two monster scoops of that in my coffee. Was this the same coffee she used to stretch her dirty fast? Because if so, yes, collagen alone will break a traditional fast since protein can elicit an insulin response which halts the autophagy, blood sugar, and digestive benefits of fasting. Then I take krill oil. There's no I like that better than fish oil because you don't have to worry about it spoiling as much and you don't have the heavy metals. Okay, so she may be onto something with the krill oil love. Krill oil, like fish oil, is rich in heart healthy omega-3s. But because krill typically feeds on algae and fish oil is typically produced by larger predator fish, fish oils have higher risk of heavy metal contamination. Now, while krill oil does have lower doses of EPA and DHA than traditional fish oil, it appears that it may be more bioavailable, which kind of equals the playing field. Its antioxidant content also has been shown to neutralize free radicals 48% greater than fish oil. That said, I think both are great options, so choose whatever you can afford and access, and make sure to look for a third-party tested product before you buy. Um, again, I like the Align Naturals Greens Powder. Like, it even has a pre and probiotic, even though I take that as well. It's all organic, all organic. To that, to the Elias Greens, I also add a product um, called Miracle Reds. I add it because I want all the reds and the blues and the purples. All organic, of course, can't not be organic. I'm pretty sure she's got like a partnership with this Alea brand, which is surprisingly undisclosed. And if that is the case, that's a whole other problem. But you guys know what I say about those greens powders, or in this case, reds powders. They're powdered multivitamins. They're not a replacement for real food, hard stop. And since she's clearly getting in a ton of antioxidant rich fruits and veggies in her day, this all seems remarkably obsolete. My symbiotic. So a symbiotic is a pre and probiotic. I'm a big supporter of pre and probiotics, but it's important that if you have any specific gut related concerns to speak to a dietitian about which probiotic strains and prebiotics will be best and not triggering for you. Well, another day, another over the top diet recall from our girl, Jillian Michaels. I feel like not much has changed with Jillian since we last reviewed her diet. Let's be honest, I'm the best. I am. Other than the fact that her team asked me to come onto her podcast and I was like, oh, I feel like I'm just kind of going to be talking to myself. Not sure it's my vibe. I'm just kind of assuming that if people who follow her are really into that no pain, no gain rhetoric, there's probably not much I can do to change that in a single podcast app. 
but let me know below if you guys think I should reconsider. And on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up, leave me a comment below on who or what you'd like to see me review next, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye!